notice how it is that we tend to create an energy that then we make ourselves subject to. We call it holiday season. <laughs> But imagine now that here we are in this time of the year and this season and we have clear lines that we tend to allow to cross our experience when in reality seasons, hours, they really are more like an advancing quality. A presence. A visitation. And it's a visitation that is not always guaranteed that it will return. We become so conditioned by our own demarcations of time that we tend to get lost in those demarcations instead of experiencing the flow of time itself. I can remember having a nine-to-five job. It was such a prison that no matter whether I liked what I was doing or not, I still had conditioned myself to look forward to 5 o'clock showing up on the clock so that then I could go on about whatever I went on about. But I was also lost in that too because I was conditioned to do things after that and did not really appreciate where I was nor what was expressing itself in the flow of time. If we open ourselves to, we can begin to feel that indistinguishable transience that expresses itself as time. Because sometimes it's a flowering. And then again, at other times, it's a disappearance. It's a quality that has its own time and has its own place, just like right here, right now. There is an invisible energy that is itself, that is expressing itself in its own flow. But it requires of us to be present with it so that we can begin to experience it as it then affects us, as it naturally would, were we present with it instead of so caught up in our own absurdities. Christmas time, for many people, it is the most meaningful time of the year. And it has grown into an absurdity. But then again, this time, and what we're making reference to so far as the personableness of time itself, can be regained if we open ourselves up to experience it as a flow, as a quality, as a presence. Something that might even be named, though only in hushed terms, and only in ways that reinforces its unknowingness. So we've grown so pragmatic that we've almost forgotten about that other part of us that is affected by this flow and tends to move into us 
and bring us into a state of rapport with it if we'll only allow ourselves to slow down and be present. Then you begin to experience its personality, its persona, its out picturing of itself. You begin to feel this flow, this hour, and you begin to experience its extraordinary self. Time in each hour of time is a season. You can almost say that it almost has its own personality. With its own pronunciation, its own song. Its appearance can be like a conversation that invites us in. And we're privileged actually overhear ourselves participating. So in this, you can escape the prison of time that you've created by your strict lines of demarcation and grant the hours their own life. You can uncurl the iron grasp of your hand on any given moment while at the same time find the ability to be more present, to be more robust, and more open to your own self-evident absurdities while at the same time continuing the conversation. This allows you to experience life from a very different state. It allows you to be present without assuming that in being present you're somehow or another running the show. It allows you to recognize the value of becoming still, of perhaps experiencing the value of your practice of meditation that allows you to then engage through your stillness and experience more of the actual power of mindfulness. Because you become a being of awareness that feels the flow of the hour that experiences its presence, that experiences its advancing quality, that reaches into the marrow of your being and touches you in such a way that you are stirred to a place of enlightenment and find that this visitation then has its ebb and its flow that leads into the next hour that has its own personality that leads to the next and the next and the next that you begin to experience life in the flow connected to the flow instead of okay, five o'clock Time to get the hell out of here. <laughs> the personality of time. It's awaiting your recognition. 10,000 flowers in spring, the moon in the autumn, a breeze in the summer, snow in the winter. If your mind is not clouded by unnecessary things, this is the best season of your life.
For more information about the Metaphysical Church of Enlightenment or the Rodin Foundation, please go to our website at www.rodin.org. If you have been inspired by the revelations shared in these podcasts, please donate to the Rodan Foundation's ongoing efforts to help others help themselves at www.rodan.org slash donate.